Now it says we can just rotate this up, get our pads out. Well, that ain't so bad, honest. <laughs> oh, God. Caliper piston, yeah, you can kind of see that. So let me guess, you fired up the old interwebs on your smartphone to find the perfect video to show you exactly how to change the brakes on your heavy duty Silverado. Well good news brother, I have just the video for you. I'll show you just how to remove and install new brake pads, rotors, and even a new caliper. So just kick back and crack a cold one while I walk you through it step by step. We will also be showing exactly how to bleed the brakes as well as the recommended brake in procedure for new pads. So I'd encourage you to set aside the time to watch the video all the way through if you plan to tackle this job yourself. Now while I pull those wheels off and try and get the truck semi-safe up on some blocks, feel free to pause the video here to see the tools, parts, and beers you'll need to get this job done. Also, I really got to mention a service manual or aftermarket book for your truck can be very helpful for technical maintenance jobs. So I bought the $30 Haynes manual that includes all sorts of helpful information like these torque specs for this 08 Silverado 2500 gas truck. And the procedure seems to be identical when I change the brakes on our 2011 diesel. So good news for all you guys out there with the Duramax under the hood. So the first thing the book mentions is to always change either both the front or both the rear pads at the same time and never just one corner. I also like to have the rotors at least cut or turned at O'Reilly's. If not, go ahead and replace the rotors as well on these trucks if we're already going through the hassle of replacing the pads. There's also all kinds of warnings about how the brake dust is apparently pretty terrible for your lungs. So we'll be sure to follow the book's warnings and not blow these off with compressed air and instead use a brake parts cleaner specific for the job. Check out the links in the description for good quality brake parts cleaner. So the book also mentions we'll want to pop the hood and remove the cap on the master cylinder, which I agree with. It also says to remove two thirds of the fluid to make room for any we will push up the system while compressing the brakes. But I find that's rarely necessary. Just keep an eye on the fluid level as brake fluid will eat up the paint if the reservoir overflows. So to get all those wheels off, all I did was knock the lugs loose while the truck was still on the ground and jack it up from a solid point, securing it with blocks or heavier duty jack stands before removing the lugs and wheels entirely. But life ain't ever easy, so let's see what the malfunction is up there on that front right. Oh, of course this one's fucking stripped on there. There we go. So with all that technical shit out of the way and the wheels finally off, we can move on to spraying off the brake assembly with our brake parts cleaner for our inspection to determine which parts you're actually going to want to replace on your truck. And we will be showing these steps in much more detail here shortly when we replace the rears, but after compressing the caliper with the C-clamp and removing the lower caliper mounting bolt, also referred to as the sliding pin, we can just rotate the caliper up and get full access to remove and fully inspect these brake pads. All right, get our pads out. They're starting with the interior. Well, that ain't so bad, honest. And after realizing I ordered two sets of rear pads on accident and didn't have any to fit the front, I determined these fronts were just fine for now. And I focused instead on the rears where I know parts will need to be replaced. But it doesn't hurt to pull the pad retaining clips and clean them up as well as the mating surface before we reinstall them. Now this is where shit got pretty fun once we started working here in the back. Starting with this lower Torx T55 lower caliper mounting bolt on the rear driver's side, which seemed to have been tightened by Zeus nice. himself. But after calling in backup, this bolt eventually did submit. And on a quick side note, I'm not sure if you can see here, but after we've already compressed the caliper pistons with that C-clamp, the caliper should be able to slide freely back and forth on those sliding pins. All right, let's see if we can just twist this up and pull it out. Nice. Nice. So, these pads... We're about gone as well. Now comes the poor bitch. We're getting this bracket out. So with the pads out of the way and the caliper slid out and set up on the leaf springs and not left dangling by the brake lines, we could get at these also very tight 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. And I also needed the help of my buddy in a long breaker bar to bust these loose, but I'm sure a stronger man with the right tools can nice. tackle this job solo. Damn, you're strong, dude. <laughs> uh, hammer. That's how we got it last time. Oh, fuck. There it goes. 
nice. Those fuckers were tight. And an affordable set of ratcheting wrenches with an 18 millimeter sure made this part of the job go a hell of a lot smoother. So check out the link below if you don't have a set. All right, and same as before, I like to put these bolts back in the bracket. And we'll actually take a Sharpie and label this the driver's side rear bracket. Make sure not to lose our little pad clips as well. So with that caliper mounting bracket out of the way, I proceeded to spend at least five minutes removing these two annoying little spiky washer parts on a couple studs as they're the only thing left holding that rotor on. There, it's fine. <laughs> and a few light taps with a rubber mallet later, I was able to get this rusty, slightly worn rotor off so we can take it into town for the boys at O'Reilly's to throw it on their lathe and make it like new again. For only 15 bucks. Hard to beat that. You all right? Mm -hmm. Here she comes. Oh, nice. Fun fact, the book mentions it's critical we don't reuse or machine down a rotor that is below the minimum wear or discard thickness. And you'll see this number cast on the underside of the front or the outside of the rear rotors. And another not so fun fact is 98% of the guys watching our Silver Auto videos aren't subscribed to the channel and are going to miss out on all of our other awesome maintenance and cheap upgrade videos I'll put out for these trucks. On the rear of these three quarter tons are park and brake. These two pads there. So we're going to go test them, see what they do. All right, hit it. Oh yeah, release it. Yeah, it's still working. And apparently they're self-adjusting, so hopefully when we can get this slot back together, uh, those will work. You know, there's still some life appears to be left on them pads. Not much, but something. So now let's move on to the most interesting corner on this job. That's fucked up. And a great example of just how much destruction you can cause if you put off a brake job for months after they start squeaking. Or embarrassingly, even weeks after they start grinding metal on metal. So I began the removal process on this side in much the same fashion. Starting with compressing this ruined caliper with the C-clamp on the pad. Oh yeah, that, and on these Torx bolts, they'll strip kind of easy, so I use a punch and a hammer, not kind of jar them, yeah, probably didn't do much of shit. Then the Torx T55 lower caliper mounting bolt, and apparently the camera shut off just as I slid that caliper up, rotating on that upper bolt, and slid it up and out of the way the same as the other side. And of course the two 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts, so we can get to the rotor. There we go. And finally, those annoying two little spiky washer rotor retainer thingies. Ha! Fuck you. And hopefully your rotor won't be this destroyed and rusted on there so tight. But since it's getting replaced anyway, I didn't mind resorting to just trying to sledgehammer it off. Which you really wouldn't want to do if this one was going to O'Reilly's to get resurfaced. But for when you're inspecting your rotor and deciding whether or not it needs to be replaced, the book mentions pulsating brakes, grinding noises, deep scores or cracks in the rotor are all a sign that a rotor should be refinished or replaced, but that light scratches or shallow grooves are normal. And of course we'll want to check both sides of the disc for the above mentioned issues. Looks like an 11 millimeter to get this banjo bolt off. Oh, you know what? I probably should have knocked that fucking loose <laughs> when it was already on the truck. All right, there we go. To remove the caliper, all I did was remove the 11 millimeter banjo bolt holding the line to the caliper. So now we're to the excitement of reassembly. So y'all crack another beer and try to bear with me as it's important we do this procedure properly as the consequences of brake failure can be fairly devastating. So here's our refinished rotor back from O'Reilly's and I'm just cleaning it up a little with some light sandpaper. Now the book specifically mentions we need to remove the pad clips and clean them up as well as the mating surface on the bracket itself and of course we would replace these little clips if they were broken. And we'll also need to ensure that our caliper pistons are fully pushed in and seated so our caliper will fit over our new thicker pads. And I like to use an old inner pad and a C-clamp to get them fully seated. 
and with our rotors on we can reinstall the caliper mounting bracket with the two 18 millimeter bolts but as i would soon learn it's critically important to have the correct side bracket as the wrong one will bolt on and let you put the pads in and even the top sliding bolt of the caliper in but won't actually line up on the bottom if you happen to be a dumbass like me who grabbed the wrong bracket don't go i think we got the fucking wrong mounting bracket on all right oh well take it off try it again and the manual also mentions to apply a thin film of high temp brake grease to the mating surface only just where the clip's gonna go and we'll definitely try to avoid getting any Dang. grease on the rotor as i assume that'd be bad news Dang. but with the correct bracket we can try again attaching it with the two 18 millimeter bolts these ratcheting wrenches sure make life easier and torquing to the correct spec for our 08 single rear wheel three quarter ton silverado oh shit that got hard in a hurry that's what she said and install our new pads again being sure to clean and lube the sliding pin oh that's not don't do that that's what not to do all right got our pin back on let's see if it interacts better oh look at that fucking right. smooth before torquing down the torx t55 caliper sliding bolt to the correct spec for your specific truck 80. new rotor new caliper and new pads. There's a rotor. Clean up the holes. Now this side started in much the same way with the caliper mounting bracket. And now this should backwards. That's backwards. So I guess you want your line by your bleeder it looks like. And we'll get the torque specs for that banjo bolt. But our new caliper is about ready to go on there our new rotor and we got new pads coming too. It's had to scuff the braze off new rotors. I don't even know what that means, but we'll do it. And real quick, before we show you exactly how to bleed your brakes and the proper break-in procedure for our new pads, I tried to get a good shot here from the back of getting the new pad clips popped in and installing the new brake pads themselves. As well as lubing and installing our new sliding pins. Uh, don't forget to hold this rubber back. For this bottom pin. And with these torque to spec, here's how I believe it breaks anytime the pedal is soft or we introduce air to the system like we just did replacing that caliper. It's worth noting this shouldn't be necessary if you didn't have to open any lines. So feel free to pause the video again here to see exactly how the book describes the procedure for bleeding the brakes, but I'm going to give you the rundown and the meat and potatoes of the process. You'll also need a helper to pump and hold the brakes for this part. Since we only disconnected a line in one corner and didn't run the master cylinder itself dry or disconnect a line up there under the hood, we should only have to bleed that one caliper or just the rears instead of all four. So the goal for bleeding the brakes is to get all of the air out of the system and only have fluid. And to get started, we will open up the cap to the master cylinder under the hood and make damn sure there's fluid in there. Checking this level and adding fluid as necessary to ensure this master cylinder doesn't run dry, which would suck air into the system, making us start the bleeding procedure all over. And the book does mention to start on the right rear, but we had that done before I could even get the camera lined up. So I just had my buddy keep continuously pumping the brakes to build the pressure while I got this line on the bleeder that runs into a water bottle half filled with new fluid as well. So after he's given an quite a few pumps I've got my 10 so millimeter right, tiny, syringe ready to crack that bleeder open he's gonna hold the pedal down and keep it down while I loosen and then retighten the bleeder note it's really critical that he doesn't release the pedal with the bleeder open as this could suck in air and prolong this process Take the reservoir. yeah good idea and by now we were just getting straight fluid coming out when we open the bleeder and no more air bubbles but with the tube on it, it would be easy to see the little air bubbles coming out. And you would just keep repeating the process of pumping to build pressure, holding the brake firmly while someone loosens and retightens the bleeder until no more air bubbles and just fluid comes out like you see here. Now with the pedal feeling solid with no sponginess, we know it's finally time to top off the master cylinder and hit the road for the brake-in procedure. After ensuring the brakes work at low speeds around the yard first, of course. Great news, the break-in procedure is as simple as making several stops from about 30 miles per hour, allowing the pads a little time to cool in between our stops. 
The book mentions approximately 20 stops will be sufficient. So if you found any of this Silverado brake information helpful, do me a quick favor and give the video a thumbs up. I'd also really like to thank the almost 5,000 of y'all who found some of the how-to content on this channel and decided to subscribe. And for those of y'all who are following along, we're getting back on track with those being beers number 149 through 172 on my way to completing the Escape Power Sports 1000 Beers of How-To Video Challenge. And as always, if we miss anything or you have any thoughts or ideas on how to improve these videos, or really any comments on the Silverado brake topic in general, leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports. I really want to thank y'all for watching. And as always, we'll see y'all on the trails.